Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, April 6, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The first thing we have on the docket is the fact that this is the last day of the trading week. Markets are closed on Friday for the Good Friday holiday. Easter Sunday is coming up. Happy Easter to everybody that celebrates that holiday. What we're going to do today is take a look at the bear and the bull case. We're going to use not only the daily chart, but we'll use the weekly chart since we've got a close of the week, which is extremely important. We'll look at both sides of the tape. You'll have an understanding of where the market remains bullish and where it gets bearish if it should drop into next week. We're going to take a look around the horn at a couple of things that are under the covers of the market. What's the first thing that jumps off the page at me on the daily chart is the fact that we had a floater type of situation into the three-day holiday weekend. That happens a lot. I talked about it this morning inside the numbers, talked about it in the live room. I bet everybody in the live room a nickel that while the market was down this morning, they would finish positive on the day. Everybody owes me a nickel. We know this. As long as they're above the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders pattern that we've had our eye on as it was triggering, as it was triggering above the neckline, and as long as that remains the case, there is a target for the completion. They don't have to do it, but it's on the table. There's a target for completion to the north side of the inverse head and shoulders pattern. Where is that target? Well, let's look at the weekly chart to get a better view. Very simply, and the target is in here, you've got a breakdown candle high over here that coincides with the 100 period moving average right around 420. You have a gap right above that. Officially, the gap is at 422.14. So right in that neck of the woods, that neighborhood is the target for the inverse head and shoulders pattern. Maybe they go a little higher, Maybe they come up short, but that's the prevailing wisdom target if this were to go to completion. You'll find some overhead resistance up in that neck of the woods if they should get there sooner than later. Let's look at something else back to the daily chart. Now, if the market should fall, we had our eye on this breakup candle low. 404.50 is the exact number. There's also a gap under here, so we'll call it 404.50 down to, let's just say, 404 for argument's sake. Anything below there, if they should get below their intraday, that's one thing. But if they should close below there and stay below there, that changes the complexion of the tape. That opens the door for a test of the neckline, if they can get below the 50-period moving average. And that changes the entire makeup of the tape. Not to say they can't test the neckline and go back up, but it's not the same situation as it stands today should they be down there. By the way, on the north side, there's stuff before you get to 420, give or take. There's 415. There's a pivot high over here. There's a lot of overhead resistance at this place, in this zone, around this area. We talked about this a couple of times this week already. Just because we have a down day, or a down two days doesn't mean the market's collapsing. It's a pullback in an uptrend until it's not. That's the mindset that you need to have when looking at the tape. It's doing what it's doing, but it's not doing the other thing, meaning turning bearish, for example, in this case, until it is. Where does that happen? It begins at 404.50, give or take. I want to do an exercise real quick that we do from time to time. I'm gonna drill down inside the S&P. I wanna take a look at some sectors so that we can get an idea from a longer term perspective where they are in the charts, what's lagging, what's not. Is it giving us a tell? Is there sector rotation? What's the story under the covers? Energy, for example, using the XLE, if they can recapture this 20 period moving average on the weekly chart, which They tried to do this week, but couldn't get her done. They have to clear this breakdown candle high. If they can do that, 
It's back to the trend is your friend until she throws your shit out the window above all the moving averages and it opens the door for a test of 90 and maybe higher. Nothing technically wrong with the energy sector XLE in particular. The XLK is akin to the tech space. Nothing wrong here above all the moving averages. She's okay. But how about the retail space? The XRT in this case, not so great. This would tell us that the spending, the consumer spending, has curtailed, or at least the market is telling you it's either in the process or will curtail. The retail space is lagging. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. Without the consumer, there's trouble in paradise. Below all the moving averages, specifically on the weekly chart, and there's a problem. Consumer discretionary, not the same as retail, but nevertheless, somewhat weak, not as weak as retail. Certainly not leading, certainly not money running into this sector. Of note, another puzzle piece. Healthcare, acting relatively well. Money tends to run into healthcare for safety purposes. Sector rotation, of note, puzzle piece. Just wanted to get a snapshot. There's other sectors out there, but this is fine to get a snapshot for what's under the covers of the S&P. The point that I wanted to show you is the consumer is weak. It makes sense. Interest rates rising, inflation rising, not necessarily rising all the time, but in an inflationary environment, people have to choose where they can allocate their capital, where they can spend their money. So they're going to have to give up something to get what they need. And that's the point that I wanted to make. About inside the numbers, who made money today? If you did, put it under the video in the comments section, please. Let's take the temperature of how we're doing. Happy Thursday. Tomorrow's Good Friday. We're off. We know that. Last trading day of the week. Let's get down to brass tacks. What if she falls? There's some unfinished business down around 405.75. If below, they'll be headed to the same price we just talked about, 404.50. You know what that's all about. How about a positive open and a bull control tape? Where would they go? The spot around 408.85 or so is important. It's overhead resistance. Zero dark 30. That's when these notes are put up on the board. We think better in pictures, right of the vertical is today's activity. Down low, 405.75, that was your unfinished business. And up here, 408.85 or so, that's your overhead resistance. Zero dark 30. But wait, there's more. Let's see what happens as the day gets underway. So we have a 907 post. It says, What's the story? In other words, where's the trade? Well, they have some unfinished business down around 405.75. They came close yesterday, which means if they're down there, they would normally expect a pretty good spike of it. We didn't get a pretty good spike of it, but that was the beginning of the zone. It's a zone of support between 405.75 and 404.50 for a bounce back in the other direction. The other side of it didn't happen, but you can read the notes, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. Things will get increasingly quiet throughout the day, which they did, leading into the three-day holiday weekend. Back of mind is some kind of floater after the morning rush. That's my nickel, finishing positive on the day. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double-check the work. 9.31, right away, on the table is the spike of yesterday's low and rip it back in the other direction, which is into a zone of support. Let them do their thing. By 9.43, they hit the top end of the zone. It's showtime. What's it showtime for? For the Bulls to begin playing defense in the zone for a snapback in the other direction. On the way back up, you have some resistance points and all that stuff. And what happened was pretty obvious Traders inside the numbers, traders in the live room. They had a very nice end of the week. That was a fantastic trade. They came back for a little higher low retest and took off for the rest of the day. Common, normal, garden variety type markets. But wait, there's more. You see here at 10.15, 
went from Whopper Jr., which is a smaller trade, to a full-on Whopper. That's a really nice, big, juicy trade. 20, 25 points on the first run up. That was a nice, juicy trade. That's S&P points. Now watch this one. 10, 43. 406, 15 is support. The line has been moved up. 406.15 is support. I put it out there in the notes, talked about it in the live room. We had traders that took the trade. So what they did was they got this trade, then they got this trade. How you doing? Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. We ended it early into the three-day holiday weekend. You want to go out on a positive note, but we had the stuff on the board. 407.70 is important. Above opens the door for 408.85 to 409, yada, yada, yada. Stocks on the move today had four potentials. Only one hit its entry objective, COHR. We'll take a look at that chart. Getting a nice haircut at the open. Coherent came down to 33. Gave you the base hit right out of the chute. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but that was more than the minimum required base hit. Then they visited the second number, bounced back and all that. They gave you one trade, two trades, whatever you wanted trades. The numbers work. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Lagging. Favorite market leading indicator, lagging the overall major market. Below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend until she throws your shit out the window. The trend is down. There's trouble in paradise until there's not. We have banking trouble. We have IWM trouble. And IWM has... A lot of the regional banks in it, so that makes a lot of sense. We looked at the consumer stuff, so we know there's stuff brewing under the covers. Doesn't mean the market won't get a bounce. Doesn't mean they won't reach the head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders target. They may or may not, but these are things you want to keep an eye on. It doesn't mean there's something imminent tomorrow. It's something that is a problem until it's resolved or it takes down the rest of the tape. Either way. Weekly chart also looks terrible below all the moving averages. It is, as I said earlier this week, a bona fide crap sandwich. The IWM chart is a crap sandwich. How about the folks down at the transportation department? My second favorite market leading indicator, but a number one canary in the coal mine. They're sitting on the last couple of moving averages in the line of defense. Give them up. They can retest the lows and again, It's a canary, so if the transports are melting down a little bit, it's a tell of the overall market. Let's drill down a little bit. Here's the weekly chart, so I want to make a comparison. Here is February 3rd, and look where the chart is relative to February 3rd. Here's a chart back in the S&P. Here's February 3rd, the week of February 3rd, and look where we are in the chart. It's different than the transports If, in fact, the transports are a canary in the coal mine, there's something brewing. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. About the Q people, nothing wrong with the Qs. Above all the moving averages, looks very similar to the SPY chart. The trend is your friend, and so on. Here's the weekly chart, same scenario, but look where we are relative to the SPY. It's ahead of schedule. They're already at the breakdown candle high, They haven't filled the gap. I think they missed it by a little bit. The gap is 322.86, and today's high was 321.63. No accidents or coincidences. They could have done it if they wanted to. They didn't. Will they do it next week? We'll see. That is the corresponding gap to the SPY. We can stay on the weekly chart for this one. The XLF, the financials, again, haven't got a reasonable bounce. All they got was a little bit of bounce off the low from a couple of weeks ago. Not really a stout kind of bounce, just a little bounce. There's still trouble with the financials, with the banking stocks. There's issues in the banking segment, sector, space, industry, the banks. They always get themselves into trouble. About Smash Mouth, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. Pullback from the highs, remaining above all the moving averages. It's a pullback until it's not. They start giving up this pivot low here at 246.43. It opens the door down to 240, give or take. We talked about it last night. There's really no change. I have a target at 265.40, give or take. 
They haven't got there yet. They could have got there last week. They could have got there this week. Maybe it's not the ultimate target. It is a target. It's important place, but maybe they have designs of going higher. As long as they're above 240, that's on the table. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.